Kelly Curtis, and today it is very exciting time for me to come and visit my son Jason Curtis at Rochester Institute of Technology, the School of the American Cla Craftsman, where Jason has just completed four years of study as a glass blower. Hi, Jason. Hello. I'd much rather have you do the talking because you know all about what happens in this hot shop. Well, I've been here for four years, and I've seen just about everything possible that this hot shop could offer me in, in, in work, a way. You've worked with hot glass? I've worked with all sorts of glass. I've done all different techniques going from blown glass to fuse casting to gravity casting to enameling. You name it, I've, I've tried it. Stained glass? No, stained glass isn't... Uh, but you tried it. I've tried it, but it's, it's not one of those processes that uh, I enjoy. I, there's a lot of other things to do with glass than just doing stained glass. It's more of a two-dimensional art stained glass, okay. making it into a three-dimensional image, but blowing glass, you're working three-dimensionally. And, uh, what, is it, what is it that you're so passionate about? What is it that draws you to doing this type of work? Because it's very hot in here, and it's a very difficult place to work in this heat and, and, and all this noise. Well, the conditions do entice your work. You oh, know. They do? That inspires you? Oh, sure. The, heat, the yeah. whole drama of this. There's nothing like sweating and working with four people as fast as you can to be productive. Um, it's all part of the game. It's like a big game. What, what temperature are you working at, though? I mean, it's very hot in here. I can't get any closer to these furnaces. Well, the, the glass, when it's at a molten state, it's, it's about anywhere between 25 and 2800 degrees Fahrenheit. And we work the glass when we reheat it and work it and reheat it. We're, we're working between the temperatures of about 1200 to 1800. Not as hot as when it first initially comes out of the furnace, but pretty hot where it's, it's pliable and flexible and, and gravity is pulling it and we, we're allowed to blow it and uh, maneuver it into a form that we want to go for. Well, what's it like being a glass blower? A big question about what's it like? What's it been like the last four years where you've been intensively just working in glass? Well, I've, I've only been exploring, you know, the media. I haven't really been outside, you know, other other than RIT. So I don't, I couldn't really describe the reality of what's what's behind it. But well, what's it like to work the glass? What's the feeling you get when you're working this very primitive, art form. I mean, you're taking one of the most primitive things there are. It's made of what? Sand? What is glass made of? Yeah, it's, it's made of sand. And it's made of silica and a whole bunch of other chemicals that acts of fluxes. There's a lot of things in it. I think the biggest thing about glass blowing or any kind of form of using glass as a media is, is, is a, trying to accomplish controlling the uncontrollable or mastering something that you really don't have a lot of control of in the beginning until you do it numerous amounts of times, you know. How many times? As many times as it takes. Well, thousands of times? It could take thousands of times. It could take only ten times. For some people, they can pick it up real quick, and for others, they get so frustrated that they, that they can't accomplish something within the, the first ten weeks of trying that they give up. That's where you gotta, you just gotta pace yourself and, and be patient, you know. I'll be patient with it. There's a real rhythm to it, though. It's almost like doing a ballet. It is. It's a, it's a whole balance act. You know, it's not only are you blowing and using your lungs and stuff, you're also balancing your weight on your feet and the way you turn your pipes and, your, and the muscles in your hand. It's, it's a whole balance game. Your whole body's involved, it looks like. Yes. I notice that your upper body is very strong. It seems like you must work your upper body, your arms a lot. Your legs get a workout just as much as your, your really? overall body gets a total workout. It's not... It's not totally in the arms. Most people think that glass blowers have big, big lungs, and they don't. No, the blowing part of it, the actual amount of air that goes into a, a form, is very minimum compared to the amount of turning with your hands and the amount of balancing on your feet. Really? Yeah. Where's the greatest risk in blowing a piece of glass? Where are your precarious moments? Uh, I would say when you transfer it from one pipe to the other. You know, when you're punting the piece. There's a lot of risk there. If there's a uh, room temperature that's off, or if you're off by your timing by a couple seconds, or one person out of your four or the team is Doesn't off. Doesn't move at the right time? One little slightest little mix-up could cause the piece to either fall on the ground or crack. What about in the annealer? 
That's your last process, right? When you put it in the annealer. Usually, when down. you put a piece in an annealer, the uh, success ratio should be 100%. But sometimes you have power outages, or somebody looks in the oven, or uh, so no peaking in the oven. No. Right? Once you once you put it away, it, it's it's away till it hits room temperature. So how long does that take for it to cool down? Depending on its thickness. Uh, anywhere between eight hours and, and uh, 100 hours, depending also, on the depending thickness. Depending on how thick it is or yeah. how large it is? Like, like a goblet, like a, a, a crystal goblet would take eight hours as compared to a solid four inch round paperweight would, paperweight would take about, you know, 38 hours. How does a person work larger though? I know you only had a chance to demonstrate smaller piece today. The large, well, Larger work, the, the larger hole? you work, the more people you need. The more weight of the glass, the more hot, the more heat, the more intensity the, the whole event is. So when people work large, usually people work in teams of, of three and four, so that everyone has a, a signed stage, and that you can all work together, you know, in unity to, to create something whole. So it really is a ballet because they have to come in right at the moment you need them. Otherwise, the whole thing's going to be a mix-up. It's going to be very difficult. You'd be working against yourself if you if you work with too much glass, unless you work, you know, with a lot of glass and you're used to it. You know, I personally like to work within the range of anywhere between five and fifteen pounds of glass, which allows me to work by myself the majority of the times and you know, a little bit more easier ease with ease with other people, like two other people. But when working with forty pounds worth of glass. You really do need a team. That's for the larger pieces. It ties it all in. It, it, it makes the piece. Tell me a little bit about these pieces of equipment behind me. What makes up a hot shop? Well, you have two parts to a hot shop. Basically, you have your furnaces, which are storage places for your glass to stay at its melting temperature. Um, they stay on 24 hours a day. And then the other pieces of equipment that you use are called glory holes. And basically, they're just, they're like the furnaces except they're where you work the piece, you reheat the piece. They don't store glass, they just reheat glass. So you mean to tell me these furnaces have to be on 24 hours a day? Yeah. Yes, there are two types that I am aware of right now that are widely used. And most of the ones that I've seen and blown out of are gas, but there are uh, other furnaces that run electrically through elements and, and uh, are a lot quieter, and some say they're a lot less than inexpensive. This is a very expensive process, isn't it? If you have to keep the furnaces running 24 hours a day. Well, it's like any other media. It's going to cost, you know. Every shop has its... Has well, its why part. is it that you have to keep the furnaces on all the time? Well, glass cannot cool down. It, it, once it stays up the temperature, you have to either work it or just let it... Does it melt away? No. No, but each time you let it cool down and you reheat it, you're making a generation down. Oh, like in photography, you're coming down with... Like in recycling, if you think about it, you know. Oh, so each time you put it back in the glory hole, it's coming down It's another... coming down a generation, and its qualities are not as, as pure as it was. So in the, the more you state. can do in a few movements, the more you can get out of that timing. Right. There's a lot of timing involved. I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about the tools that you use, because they look so primitive to me. I mean, this must be an art form that goes back to ancient times. Well, this the, is your tools? The most common tool is, is the jacks. Um, think of it as a, a very pliable pair of uh, tweezers. Don't think it, these get very hot or the heat doesn't travel well, up to where your hands are? It's made out of a special metal that heats up only a certain distance. I mean, if you were to use it on the back side and then grab it 10 seconds later, sure, it's going to be hot, but it generally doesn't heat up as quick as other uh, steel or other metals. What does this do now? I saw you shaping the work with it. This piece is uh, a widely used, it's the most common glass tool that I would know that glass blowers use. It, it's used for shaping the pieces. Its primary purpose is to jack down, to create a neck, a line where the piece can be separated from pipe to pipe. Oh. And that's its primary purpose. I but saw you fanning some out, people, though, with some it. Some people, yeah, some people, it's used for opening up the pieces. Uh, a wide thing, putting a bottom on a piece, cooling a piece down, guiding a piece. It, this is the, the one tool. This is essential. That's the basic that's tool. Essential. There are other tools that you use. Uh, tweezers, yes. pull, twist, 
uh, another form of tweezers, you know, or certain scissors. This is called a bent puffer, a weird looking tool. First time I ever saw you do that, you were blowing through that today. Yeah, it allows you to blow out the top half of the piece before opening it up. Opening up you do with the, twe the, with tweezers. the tweezers. The pliers, the jacks. the jacks, okay. You open up the neck with the jacks. Right. While it's molten. While it's hot. And not yep. molten, hot. While it's hot. The difference. When it's molten, you're at a temperature where glass is at a liquid state. When it's hot, what we consider hot is when it's flexible and pliable and, and moves. How long do you have till that cools off then? About 20, depending on the glass and its lead content. Anywhere between 20 to uh, 2 minutes. Oh, so you have as much 20, time as 20 that. 20 seconds to 2 minutes, yeah. But you have to keep moving it though, right? Con yeah, well... Gravity will always fight against you if you if you don't work with it. Uh, you can my my uh, my suggestion is that you always work with gravity because gravity could be your friend rather than oh we'll go with the pressure. flow of it. Sure. But that's why you keep moving it with your fingers. The pipe you don't ever let it stay still very long. No, you can't because if you let it stay still, the gravity will pull the glass down. It'll just droop. It want, it'll want to fall down. So that's why you're always turning because you got this center line of you have this axis that you have to rotate around. So you're working from the center all the time. So it's like centering yourself. You got to be centered when you do this or the thing is going to come out, whatever you're working, all off center. All off you're center. angry or frustrated. One thing's out of place. It just goes downhill from there. So it's just a whole thing. It's like the music. Tell me about these buckets. I mean, everything here is so primitive. You have these buckets with water in them? Yes. What, what's, what's the purpose of all that? Well, you have to store your, your wooden tools in water. They always have to be stay, remain soaked because if they dry, they'll crack. Uh, the most primitive tool that we use is newspaper. Let's see. You show me what that wooden cup is that I saw you shaping with. I mean, it's the most primitive things you work with. These are with. called blocks. blocks. Basically, they shape the glass into egg-like egg forms. If you don't want to use blocks, you could use newspaper. Just Wet, big blocks. Newspa you put a big wad of newspaper underneath it, it doesn't burn through? Yeah, it's the most inexpensive tool that glass blowers use widely. It's newspaper wadded up. True. I don't understand it's, why it, it doesn't gets burn. Us, that's the closest we can get to touching glass while it's hot, is a wet piece of newspaper. Oh, so you can almost feel it. I mean, that's the closest sure. you get to it. And I see you have a flat paddle. Show, show us the flat paddle. Yeah, so now, what's that these do? These come in, in all different sizes. Basically, you know, when you're flattening the piece, or if you're guarding somebody's arm from heat, oh. you know, the oh. shields. That's what you shield it with? Sure. And like I say, these come in thousands. You basically cut out your wooden paddles to what you prefer. Oh, what sizes you like to work. It's like a pizza paddle or something, though. It just amazes me that you can work with the least, it looks like, just primitive. I mean, I could say the least expensive things, but I know these things are not inexpensive. Your pipes are not expensive. It, they are expensive, I mean, your pipes. Well, your pipes will last you a lifetime, as, as well as your tools, as long as you take care of them. Oh, really? And so they just because they're expensive in the beginning, it just gives you more of an incentive to take care of them. Well, what are you doing from here now? You're going to finish up your four-year program at Rochester Institute of Technology. You have a degree, a BFA in art, now what does one do, or what do you think you're going to try to focus yourself on next? Or haven't you had a chance having to do so much here under such an intense program? Have you had any time to think about what's going to happen next in your life? Too much time. You've had too much time to think about it? I, I, I think I'm going to further my exploration in uh, other, th other ways of using glass rather than, than uh, blowing. And, uh, or rather than hot glass? Yeah, I'm going to look at more cold techniques, more fuse casting, pot de verre molds, other ways of using glass, and I'll probably further my exploration at a, of a calmer... Slower pace? Sure. Not as intense as it's been here in a 10-week semester? I understand you've been working with neon recently. Yeah, that's a whole new ball game. That's a whole new art form in itself, neon. Yeah. That's well, can it. you uh, run us through the paces? Can you treat us all and show us how to make a piece of glass so we can watch you? Yeah, I'll, I'll be glad to do that for you. Okay, we're going to get a good look at you uh, demonstrating a piece of long glass. Right now. Okay, thanks, Jason. All right. Watching Jason Curtis in the hot shop. He's going to make a glass piece. A snail right now, he's going in to gather glass on...
rolling it out to get nice and even. Now he's putting color in the glass. He started with clear glass. Now he's putting a blue coral glass on top. He's gathering the clear glass on top. more colored glass on top, thus making layers. Going back in the glory hole to melt the colored glass on top of the clear. Is it going to form the glass into a ball? Now he's creating air pockets so that there'll be small little encaptured air pockets once when he gathers more glass on top. This will enable him to capture air pockets inside. Letting the glass cool down so that the clear glass will adhere when he puts it back into the, into the gathering vat. Now he's capturing the clear glass on top. As you notice, the very tip is very hot, where the bottom is cool. Notice the color change. Creating a snail-like appearance at the very tip. As you notice, the very tip is very hot, where the bottom is cool. Notice the color change. Creating a snail-like appearance at the very tip. Jacking the piece down so it can be taken off the pipe. And let it cool down to bring the piece off the pipe. And the very tip of the part looks like a snail.
as the piece cools, you can see the color change, the blue turning its original color, going from red to blue. It's done. He's now applying water to the edges to stress the piece out right around the edge where it'll come off the pipe. Massive stress concentration right at the, towards the brake part of the piece when it will come off the pipe.